All right, now that we have the theoretical underpinnings of the central limit theorem, uh, let's see how it works out in practice. Uh, so I wanted to just recap it quickly in my own words. So the central limit theorem, the idea is you've got some population and you take samples from it. Uh, samples of size n. Uh, we did samples of size 5 in the last video. Uh, but then you get the average of each sample and then you plot all of those sample averages. And the central limit theorem says three things will happen when you do that process. First of all, the uh, mean of the sample averages will be the same as the mean of the population. So the mean stays the same as you transition from an individual to a group. And it says the standard deviation gets smaller. And we even have a formula for exactly how much smaller it gets. Uh, it says, the formula says that the standard deviation of the samples, uh, the sample means, the x-bars, uh, that standard deviation will be the original standard deviation divided by the square root of 5, or the square root of the sample size, whatever sample size that might be, 5 or 30 or 100. And part 3 of the central limit theorem says the uh, shape of those sample averages, when you plot them, uh, will come out normal, bell-curved. If the original population is normal, or if you take samples of size 30 or bigger. Okay, so let's see how that works out with an actual homework problem. Uh, let's start with number 10. Uh, just kind of does the basic idea. Uh, so number 10 gives you some normally distributed data. It says it's normally distributed, there's a mean, there's a standard deviation. This is uh, how high adult females can reach, overhead reach distance. So 10a says if one adult female is randomly selected, find the probability that her overhead reach is between 180 and 200. And this is not central limit theorem, by the way. <laughs> That'll come in part B. Uh, part A is just about one person. Part B is where it's about a group, and we'll use the central limit theorem. So let's do part A first. Um, like any normal distribution problem, we'll start by drawing a sketch. So we'll draw ourselves a normal curve. And it's centered at 205.5 is the mean. Uh, the standard deviation is 8.6. Uh, so two standard deviations, like about 15, so about 15 up and 15 down. Anyway, um, so one adult female is randomly selected between 180 and 200. So 180 is probably pretty far down here. 200 is not, you know, it's probably about there. Okay, and we are trying to find this area right there. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, the central or uh, normal distribution uses z scores. Again, so we'll have to turn 180 into a z score. And we know the process for that, right? It's 180 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And we would do the same thing for 200. And that's where you grab your calculator. And I actually switched calculators. Um, this one you can keep history on. So I've done those two calculations already. And we get negative 2.97 and negative 0.64. So negative 2.97 and negative 0.64. Um, and now we're ready to grab stat disk and to figure out the total area to the left of 200 and then chop off the little bit that's to the left of 180. So uh, to the left of 200, so negative 0 0.64. Uh, negative 0 0.64. That's 0.26109. Yeah, 
Again, that's the entire area on the curve to the left of 200. Now we need to chop off this tiny little bit right here. Uh, is the, the women that have an overhead reach less than 180, not very many, but uh, let's figure out what that is. So that was a z-score of negative 2.97. Yeah, that's just a small percentage of women, 00149. Okay, uh, so still basically 26%. Um, let's see, I can't quite do that in my head, so let's crunch that one. 0. 0.26109 minus 0. 0.00149. Uh, 0.2596. So again, right around 26% of adult females will have an overhead reach between 180 and 200. Okay, so that was part A. Uh, let's take a look at part B. Part B now is talking about a group. So here's central limit theorem. It says if 50 adult females are randomly selected, find the probability that their average overhead reach is between 198 and 206. Okay, fine. So let's draw. Central limit theorem says this is still normally distributed. So let's draw ourselves a normal curve. Uh, central limit theorem says the mean is still the same for groups of 50. Uh, it does say the standard deviation is going to be smaller, though. It says the standard deviation is not going to be 8.6 anymore. It's going to be 8.6 divided by the square root of 50. So let's get that. 8.6 divided by the square root of 50. 8.6 divided by the... Uh, let's see, square root of 50. Um, and that is about 1.22. Okay. Um, other than that, the process is pretty similar. We're just going to say we want between 198 and 206. So 198 be down here somewhere 198 and 206 is going to be up here somewhere and we're trying to find that area which looks like a pretty good chunk um, but we'll do this the same way that we did the last problem so we need z scores for 198 and 206 um, let's see So for 198, the z-score will be minus 205.5. And this time we're dividing by 1.22. And the z-score, so that's z-score for 198. The z-score for 206 will be similar. It'll be 206 minus 205.5 all over 1.22. Okay, so let's crunch those numbers. Actually, I can do a little bit of this in my head. Uh, let's see, this will be negative 7.5 divided by 1.22, and this will be 0.5 divided by 1.22. Don't feel like you have to do any of this in your head. You can certainly just grab your calculator, but I'm saving myself a little bit of screen switching. So negative 7.5 divided by 1.22 uh, is about negative 6.15 and then 0.5 divided by 1.22 is about 0.41. So negative 6.15 
0.41, it's 0.41, right? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so now we just need the areas to the left of each of those Z scores. There's not gonna be anything to the left of negative 6.15. We're gonna end up subtracting off zero, but let's do the process anyway, just to make sure. Um, so 0 0.41. And that's 0.6591. And let's subtract off this, this minimal, this basically zero area of negative 6.15 to the left. Uh, oops, wrong tab. Yeah, and there's, there's zero area to the left of that. Okay, so minus zero and the uh, probability that 50 adult females when you average their overhead reaches, and that's between there and there, about 66% of the time, 0. 0.6591. Okay, so I know there's a lot of number crunching here, but I really just wanted to point out that we're doing exactly what we did in 6.3. The only real change was right here when we looked at a group instead of looking at individuals. All that really happened is we changed the standard deviation. Uh, other than that, the process was identical to what we've done before. So in the next video, I want to do one more example, and then I think you'll be ready to tackle the homework.